Hello all, today we will study quick sort. In the previous lesson, we had seen merge sort and today's turn is for the quick sort. So let's see what we are going to learn today. Uh, we learn the quick sort, the basic concept behind the quick sort, how we can do the quick sort with an example. Then we will talk about the space complexity and time complexity that is involved in the quick sort. So let's begin the lesson for the day today. Uh, let's say this is the example and uh, we want to perform a quick sort. Uh, before I go to the uh, example, let's see a very simple algorithm for the quick sort. So this is a quick sort where we have passed three parameters. A is the array of the elements which are unsorted elements. P is the low index or it is the initial index. Like in this case, this is the first index will behave as P. So this will be P and the last index will behave as R. So we'll pass the P, the low index and R, the highest index. Then inside the uh, this quick sort, the first condition that we are checking is P is less than R. Till P is less than R, we need to perform partition. So this is important. What is the partition? Basically partition is uh, dividing up this uh, long array into two uh, half almost half parts. We'll see how it is done. So we will divide this into two half parts and then we'll again call quick sort on each of those uh, almost half parts. So this is what we are doing a partition of this array uh, from P to R. It will divide this and will give us a partition index. Let's say Q. So all the elements that are left side of the Q will again be sorted by recursively calling this quick sort. So we'll take from P to Q minus one. It's the one left hand side part and, and we'll uh, recursively we'll call this quick sort. And on the similar way on the right hand side part, right hand side part, uh, the elements uh, on the right hand side of that particular Q uh, that is from Q plus one to R, we'll again call quick sort and this will We'll keep doing this till we have a sorted array. So this is a recursive calling. Uh, recursion is involved into this quick sort. So let's see how this partition end is done. So it's pretty simple in the quick sort. It's all about, let's say we want to align one element so that all its smaller element are on the left side and all its larger elements are on the right hand side. So basically uh, we are uh, positioning one element on its proper place and by doing this we'll do this for all the elements so uh, finally obviously we'll have a sorted array so let's say uh, we need to take the pivot element so that means the element we want to position first on its proper place so let's say we are taking this uh, first uh, 14 as our pivot element so we are taking this 14 as our pivot element. So let me write that in the first case, the pivot is 14 uh, for which the P is uh, one, right? So we want this 14 to be aligned on this proper place such that all the elements which are smaller than 14 are on the left hand side and all the elements which are larger than this 14 are on the right hand side. For that purpose, uh, we'll take i here. So this is i. It is just next to the pivot element. We'll not uh, use this pivot element. And from this side, we'll take another index that is j. i will move to this side, to the right hand side, and j will move to the left hand side. And we'll perform the comparisons. So let's say, what is the condition? The first condition for this i, i index, if element at i index that is ith element is greater than pivot if ith element is greater than pivot and the next condition jth element is smaller is smaller than the pivot this is the first condition why we are taking this condition because we want to sort it in ascending order that means all the smaller elements must be on the left hand side and all the larger elements must be on to the right hand side so our purpose is to bring all smaller elements on the left side and send all larger elements to the right hand side 
Now we are trying to position this 14 somewhere here in the list and such that all smaller elements from this 14, all the elements which are smaller than this 14, we need to bring them onto the left hand side and all the larger elements to 14, we need to send them to the right hand side. So the first condition is if ith element is greater than pivot, that means there is an element which is larger than 14. Then what we need to do is we need to send this element onto the right hand side and jth element which is less than the pivot element. So there is an element which is smaller on the right hand side. But what we need, we need to bring that smaller element to the left hand side. So if this is a condition that what we need to do is we will swap and what we'll swap, we'll swap ith element with jth element. So we need to swap these two elements. So let's check. So first the ith element is 20 and we can say that 20 is greater than 14. So the first condition is true. And the next condition, let's say this is the jth element, this is 10. And we can say that 10 is smaller than 14. So this condition is also true. Then what we need to do is we need to swap ith element with jth element. So we'll swap these two elements. 20 will go on this place and 10 will come on this place. So let me swap these two elements. So I'm writing this is 10 and this will be 20. So there will be a swap, right? And once we make a swap, then for the next step, we need to increment both the indexes. So what we need, we need a swap on first and then we increment we will increment both, uh, let's say we'll increment i and we will decrement j. That means we'll move both i and j further. So i will be moved here and j will be moved here. So i will be incremented and j will be decremented. So now we have incremented i. So now i is at this position and we have decremented j, so now j is at this position. Now again, we need to check these two. So let's see, what is at i? This is seven, which is a smaller than 14. So as this is a smaller number, we would like to keep it here, okay? On the left-hand side part. And on the other hand, this is j, it's a larger element. 18 is a larger element than 14. Then again, we would like to keep it here on the right hand side because these are already in their proper places. So this is the condition number two. Let me see. This was the condition number one. And now if the condition number two, if ith element, ith element is less than pivot element and jth element jth element is greater than pivot which is exactly we want and both these are on their positions let's say if it is on the left side and this is on the right hand side then what we'll do we'll do nothing so do nothing that means there will be no swap and we will uh, increment that means there will be no swap and then increment i and decrement j. So we'll move the indexes. So i will move from this place to this one and j will move from this one to this place. So let me move this i here and let me move this j here. So we'll increment i and then we'll decrement j. So this is how we have, uh, we are onto this position. Let's do it again. So we'll repeat this uh, comparison and let's see what is the condition now. Uh, we can see that this a is smaller than 14. Now this a is a smaller than 14. That means it's on its proper place. It's on the left hand side part. On the other hand, this uh, 6 is smaller than 14. So 6 is smaller. It has to be here in the left hand side. That means we need to bring this to the left hand side. So we will keep this on its place right now and we need to swap this somewhere. But this is also smaller. So we'll not swap with this element right now. So what we will be doing is 
Uh, let me write the third condition here. I'm removing these first two conditions. If you want to note it down, you can pause the video, you can replay back and you can do it again. So let me write the third condition. Now what uh, we will do in this case. So in the third case, uh, what is there? If ith element, let's say if ith element is a smaller than 14 and jth element is also smaller than 14. That means both the elements are smaller than 14. So we need to uh, bring this element to the left hand side. What we will do? We will not do any swap. So we will not swap. No swap will be done. And in that case, we will stick to this index on the right hand side, but we will increment i. So we will, what we will do? We will increment i and no change on this j index because we want this element to be swapped onto the left hand side. So we'll simply increment i. So this is the next condition. So let's say uh, what we need to do is we need to increment i. So we will increment i and we will keep this j on its place. Right. Now let's do it again. i is here, j is here. Let's apply the condition. Uh, this is 21. It's larger than 14. And this is 6 smaller than 14. The first condition, this is larger, has to be gone this side. This is a smaller, has to be uh, brought onto the left hand side. So we need a swap and then we will increment i and we will decrement j. So this was the first condition. So let's do this. Uh, so what we'll be doing it is in this case, 21 is larger than 14 and 6 is smaller than 14. The first condition, in that case, we'll have a swap. We'll swap <coughs> these two elements. So this 6 will come here and this 21 will go at this place and then we'll increment i and then we'll decrement j. So this is done, right? Now let's do it again. In this case, we can see that uh, 15 is uh, larger than 14 and 17 is also larger than 14. So 15 is a larger element. That means we want 15 to be at that side, we want to shift it to the right hand side, but 17 is also a larger element. So we do not want this to be swapped. So what we'll be doing is this is the fourth condition. So let me write the fourth condition here. If ith element is greater than 14, or this is pivot basically, and jth element is also greater than 14 or basically the pivot element. So what we'll be doing is uh, we'll do no swap and we need to keep this uh, ith index on the place because we want to swap it later with some element but we will decrement this. So the next is decrement or we can say move j. So we need to decrement j or we need to move j further. So this will come here, J. Right. So now, next again, we need to compare. Now, I is 15 and at J, this is 3. Uh, I is greater than 14 and 3 is smaller than 14. So this is the first condition and we will have a swap here and then we will move our indexes. So let's say uh, this will be 3 and here it will come 15, right? And then we'll increment i and then we'll move this j as well so both i and j will be on to the same element so this is the last element now we need to check with this element whenever we have i and j onto the same element so we have done almost everything we have uh, shifted all the larger elements that side and we have shifted all the smaller elements that side now we'll check this element with the pivot element finally and if this element is a smaller, then we have a swap. And if this element is larger, then we will shift one index left hand side and then we will have a swap. So we can see that this is a smaller 2 than 14. Then what we have, we will have a simple swap. So we will say that 2 will come here and finally 14 will come here. The 14 is on its place and all the elements which are smaller than 14 are on its left hand side and all the elements which are larger than 14 are on the right hand side. Now we need to perform the partition. This index 
is going to be the Q for us. Remember, uh, here partition was returning a variable that is Q, the index Q, from where we have to turn the partition. Now, the two partitions from P to Q minus 1, that is from P to Q minus 1, here from 2 to 3. This will be one uh, independent array. And the next partition was Q plus 1 to R, that is from 15 to 20. This will be the next independent partition. And then we will take this as another array and we'll perform the quick sort what we were doing on this whole array. That's the recursion calling. So we'll take from two to three as a separate list and we'll do everything what we were doing on to this. In this way, then again, this will be partitioned and we'll have another two parts and then we'll sort them again. So in this way, recursively, this will perform all the sorting and finally we have a sorted list. So this is the queue. We have partitioned left hand side and right hand side. We'll call a quick sort recursively on the left hand side. Then we'll call a quick sort on the right hand side. Again, on this left hand side, this will be P and this will be R. We need to find out Q and then we'll again partition this into two separate parts. And this process will go on till we have a sorted list. So this is the quick sort. Now let's talk about the complexity of this quick sort. You can also note it down or you can pause the video, you can replay the video to understand the things better. Uh, now let me talk about the space complexity for this. Uh, this is the first statement and for this statement we can see that this is a simple comparative space statement. So the space complexity of order of one. Here we are uh, partitioning the whole array of size n. So this will be of order of n. So this will be of order of n. Let me shift it a little bit. Right. So this will be of order of n. This is a quick sort on almost the half part. So this will be uh, t of n upon 2. And this is also a quick sort on almost the half part. So this will be again t of n upon 2. And as this is a recursive calling, so we'll uh, apply the recursive function into this. And the recursive function will be 2 t n upon 2 so t, t of n upon 2 plus t of n upon 2 so this will become 2 t of n upon 2 and plus t of n which is a recursion and the solution to this recursion is n log n so the time complexity of quick sort comes to be order of n log n this is the uh, time complexity okay i was just discussing about space complexity let me convert this to the time complexity and this is also of t of one so we had discussed the time complexity first uh, let me remind you once again this is a, a comparison will take a, a constant time and this is the partitioning on n elements will take t of n this is the uh, quick sort recursive quick sort will take t of n upon two this is again a recursive quick sort almost on the half elements will take t of n upon 2 and this is a recursive uh, process so we'll apply a recursion method so this will be twice of t of n upon 2 plus t of n whose solution you can find out with the master's theorem or tree method or by any other method and this comes to be n log n so the time complexity of quick sort comes to be n log n and one more thing this is the uh, best case time complexity the quick sort has a worst case time complexity of order of n square. This is worst case time complexity for the quick sort. Right. And now let's talk about the space complexity. So uh, actually this, uh, let me remind, remove this and let me talk about the space complexity. So this will take off order of one. This will require n uh, elements, n positions. So this is s of n. This will require uh, n upon two and this will require n upon two elements because this is almost half elements. This is almost half elements and this is uh, n elements. We have to perform the partition onto this and this is of uh, one space requirement because this is a simple comparison. So. Uh, in all, the space complexity of this comes to be of order of n. So the quick sort uh, has the space complexity of order of n, like almost all the algorithms, and the time complexity, best case n log n, and worst case order of n square. 
So I hope you have understood this uh, quick sort. We'll be coming with the heap sort and uh, more sorts into in the coming further lessons. Thank you so much.